that's how the show was born. We started having all these conversations about taking better care of ourselves and eating healthier and taking um, rest and meditating and having healthier emotional and spiritual lives, which greatly affects our physical world. Welcome back to the Dr. Crockett Show. I'm your host, Dr. Susan Crockett. This is my lovely co-host, Ollie. Ollie of Hollywood Studios. I uh, got a really good show for you today. Uh, today, I am going to be talking about the second of our seven seeds of the soul. So for those of you joining us for the first time, these colors represent our teaching curriculum. And today we are talking about the second one, which is heal. So just to review, the seeds go be, heal, love, give, grow, pray, and attune. And these are going to be chapters in a book that's coming out later this year. So stay tuned. For right now, you get to hear it first here. Today's topic is heal, which seems kind of appropriate since I am a physician, right? We're supposed to heal the body. Um, the other thing is, I have a funny story to start with. I was on a forum way, way back at the beginning of forums on the internet, like in the mid 2000s era when people were just starting to get the gist of online forums and Facebook was new and wasn't anything like it is now. And I was in a group chat and I said something about how I was a healer and they were like, no, you're not. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I'm a doctor. That's what I do for a living is I heal. I make people better. Um, but what they were talking about was a different context. They had an understanding of being a healer from a spiritual context. And I think it's important when we address this topic that we are careful to include both the spiritual and the physical. And so we're going to lead with that today. The first thing I wanted to offer to you is a definition. What it, what does it mean to be healed or to heal? And why am I making this the second seed? So for those who, of you who haven't seen the first uh, seed episode, it's called Be, like how do you want to be? And the first seed is all about your self-care. What are the routines that you want to do? How do you want to show up in this world for yourself and the others that you love? What is your B? Well, the second seed, Heal, is about going the next step further, which is finding the things that are broken and restoring them. That's what it means to heal. So when we think about that in my office, I'm a GYN surgeon, I do minimally invasive GYN surgery, all day long I'm looking for the things that are broken, the physical things that are not working in people's bodies. So in my practice I do a ton of fibroid surgery, I do hysterectomies, almost everything I do is robotic, same day surgery, minimally invasive, and... Um, and my, my whole job is to find what's broken and to do surgery to fix it. Now, do I think that that's the end of the healing process for a patient? By no means. That's only the beginning. So let's talk a little bit about the process of, of healing and what that actually means. So the process starts out by noticing or becoming aware of or having an awareness of something being broken or not quite right. That might be something in your body that's not working right. It may be something emotionally that isn't working right. It may be something in your environment or the world that is not working right. But, but whatever it is, what we're doing is we're focusing our attention and our awareness on what is broken or what is not working the way it should. Once we've done that, we go through a process, we do it naturally, uh, you do it too, a process of diagnosis. And in medicine, we call this a differential diagnosis. A mechanic would call it something different, I think. I have a quick joke about uh, mechanics and GYNs and surgeons. I'm going to mess this one up because I can't tell jokes well, but so here's the joke. What's the difference between a mechanic and a surgeon? Well, we do it, we fix it with the engine running. <laughs> Very cute. Okay. What's the difference between a mechanic and a GYN surgeon? We do it with the car running, but we do it through the tailpipe. 
<laughs> okay, that's about as inappropriate as I'm ever going to get on this show. But that's those are the only two jokes I know, and they're kind of funny. So just like a car mechanic would do diagnostics where they're trying to figure out what's not working right in your car, you do the same thing when you have something that doesn't feel right. And you know you do. In fact... You, the first thing that you do, like if your shoulder doesn't feel well or something, or you feel something not right in your body, when you become aware of it, what does your mind do? Your mind goes through this little list of all the things that it could possibly be. And I'm talking to you, you who go to Google and start looking at the worst case scenario of everything. And then you end up in my office with me going, okay, let's figure this out. So then... As a doctor, what I do is I sit down with a patient and I'm trying to figure out what are the possibilities of things going on? What are the most likely things? How do we best approach the scenario? And that's called being a diagnostician. So once I've identified that there's something that needs help with surgery, we book the surgery. We actually take the patient there. We we most of the time do it with no narcotic recovery, same day surgery. It's super fun. My whole surgery uh, world is about making surgery easier for women. And uh, stay tuned for more of that at the end of the month. We're coming up on our 10 year anniversary for my practice, Virtuosa GYN, by the way. And we're going to do a whole segment on what a MIG surgeon is, a minimally invasive GYN surgeon, and, and uh, our 10 years of making surgery easier for women. So I'm super excited by that. That's going to be in a couple of weeks. Um, what was I talking about? Okay, back to the fixing the patient. So we'll go to the operating room. My job as a surgeon is to have the correct diagnosis, but also know what to do once I get inside the patient. Uh, I always say surgery is just like Christmas. You can do all the diagnostic testing, the labs, and all of that. You think you know what's going on, but you never really know until you get in there. And then that's when the fun part of surgery begins because it's a very creative endeavor where we're going and fixing people. So we get them through the surgery, but that is not the end of the process. And just like you would go through a process for your car being broken or having an emotional um, problem that that is a a spiritual or an emotional brokenness, uh, the healing is is just starting at that point. So without my patients having bodies that are healthy and able to continue the healing process, my surgery is worthless. In fact, when we see patients that have collagen disorders or autoimmune disorders uh, or, or who are just sicker patients, they their bodies have a lot more difficulty healing and a lot more complications. And that's the other part of what I deal with in my practice is dealing with the really complicated uh, patients that not everybody else wants to take care of. So when we're talking about this in the post-op uh, world, when I see my patients after surgery, we start getting into some discussions that have nothing to do with the actual physical surgery that I did myself. We start talking about all of the things in their life and their lifestyle that may be broken and need help in healing. Uh, and and out of those conversations, that how, that's how the show was born. We started having all these conversations about taking better care of ourselves and eating healthier and taking um, rest and meditating and having healthier emotional and spiritual lives, which greatly affects our physical world. And so when I started talking with patients on this level, what we're doing is helping them prevent future physical problems so they don't have to come back to do surgery with me again, hopefully. But then we're also teaching them how to help their bodies work with their bodies to heal themselves after they leave my office. And because I started having those conversations again and again and again, we decided to create a whole show about wellness for our patients. And that's exactly what the Dr. Crockett show uh, was born from. And that's where the seven seeds of the soul came from. I started looking at the processes and the conversations that we were having. So one of the things about our show is our core values. And one of our core values and one of our very strongly held beliefs is that as you help people become the best versions of themselves, which we call our virtuosa selves, a virtuosa is the feminized version of a virtuoso or an expert, a master at something. As you become the best version of yourself and heal yourself, we believe that you start to look around and heal the world around you. And this is our philosophy about how we make the world a better place, just as one person speaking through a camera to, to you guys. 
Uh, We all are here to encourage each other and to offer up that healing. And that core value is something that is at the heart of both my medical practice and the Dr. Crockett show. So as we move forward into thinking about the healing process, Uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the show, a lot of times people separate out the spiritual or the emotional. I don't mean to imply that those are the same thing, but people separate out the spiritual or the emotional sides of healing from the physical side of healing. For instance, it's very easy to say, oh, there's a broken bone. We need to fix it. It's much harder to say, oh, you have a broken heart. We need to fix that. And then even if you can identify something like that, then the question becomes, well, what tools do we have to help you do that? And I think the important thing here is to realize that there's not just one way. There's not just a go to the doctor and get it fixed kind of way. There's not just a go pop a pill uh, with a prescription kind of way, although prescription uh, medicines are amazing and we use them widely to help fix and heal a whole lot of things, but they're only one tool in our tool bucket. And I think we need to be more aware of all the other tools that we have at our disposal. And those may be the things that we think of as more intuitive or softer. If you sit still, if you can be still for a minute and listen to your body, just sit for a minute and be still and know there's this Bible verse in there somewhere. There's also a Buddhist saying. <laughs> that's that's a, a theme across many religions because a lot of spiritual teachers teach about being still so that you can have that awareness and settle your body. And that in turn influences your physical world, both internally and externally. So I want you to think about the tools that we have for that. So if you sit and be still and learn how to meditate, that's one tool. A lot of you uh, are very um, have religious uh, views, and we, we're not a show that teaches a specific religious uh, viewpoint. We respect uh, all re- all religions, and but a lot of people in, in pray. Pray is a communication between us and the divine, uh, a communication between what is in our heart and our soul with what is outside of ourselves. And so there are several times types of prayer here that are helpful, and this comes into play a lot with healing. How often do you see people in the hospital who are sick being prayed for and prayer chains being set up? So the first side is actually praying for a result that's called a petition prayer. Well, the other side of prayer, the flip side is the listening side of prayer. And that's what meditation is, or contemplative prayer. So when you're contemplating or being still and receiving, that is another type of healing that you have access to. And you have spiritual helpers within your denomination or your religious field to help you too. The other thing that's really helpful is to learn to uh, uh, look outside the traditional realms of healing. I have a great respect and an increasing respect for practitioners of Eastern medicine. There's all kinds of Ayurvedic um, medicine, um, acupuncture and, uh, and naturopaths, all kinds of people that have wisdom and knowledge that extends beyond and is different than my understanding of Western medicine. And I think it's just an amazing thing when you start looking at the plants and the variety of uh, healing that's available in nature. Uh, I think it's very arrogant for me to say that uh, my way is the only way or that the medicines that I have are the only things that help heal people. So I would encourage you to use your food as a medicine. We teach whole food plant-based uh, diet on this show because of the incredible pharmacy and interacting and uh, pro- interactive properties of foods. And we have lots of videos for you to go back and look, check out the broccoli episode. That was one of my favorite ones. Um, so I want you to encourage to look at, r- around your world and see what is available for you to help heal yourself. And also what is available that needs healing around you that you can help heal in the world as well. This can uh, also be a thought between the divides that are in our world. If you look at our political system, some may say that's broken. If you look at how uh, masculines and feminines uh, are interacting, there's a lot more talk recently about the patriarchy and the matriarchy and feminism and toxic masculinity and all of that. And um, what I would encourage you to think about is, as the mother of boys who I adore, um, 
I want you to think about more about healing the brokenness that do, those divides and those things that divide us uh, require compassion and patience and healing. And those may be harder to heal than me taking out a fibroid. Uh, so I want you to think about those types of things when you're thinking about healing also. And this can go from very micro uh, down, you know, from a cellular level, like what can you do to make your telomeres longer so that you live longer? What can you do to... Um, what can you do to increase your mitochondrial health or your cellular health? Uh, and then from that, you can continue up into your limbs, your body, your organs, and then your family, your world around you, all the way up to a very uh, meta level with the universe. And uh, think about what your place is in it, just like Ollie is. He's had enough. <laughs> he's like, okay, mom, that's enough healing. Um, actually, I think he's right. Uh, this has been a really great topic. Thank you for tuning in today. The third seed that we're going to be talking about on the next seed episode is the pink one. This is love. That's my favorite one. So uh, y'all stay tuned. Have a wonderful week. I'll talk to you next Tuesday. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and share if you think this is helpful uh, to, to you. Share it with your friends. And if you have comments, uh, in the please leave comments in the comments section below. We do read them. And uh, I'd love to hear your ideas for more content. Until next week, see ya. Love you. Bye.